So one of the luxuries of working with Python is it is an interpretive language. It, it actually allows us to sort of program on the fly, if you will. Uh, case in point, one of the things that we can do is actually uh, just start typing into the shell. So say, for example, I wanted to do something like uh, 3 plus 3. All right, well, I'm actually kind of treating it like a, it's a massive calculator all of a sudden. I can hit enter, and I'm going to see 6. And I can do the same kind of concepts. I can come in and maybe do 3 minus 3, and I can hit enter, and I get 0. Now, this is where things get a little kind of off, if you think about this. Uh, what happens if I want to do, say, multiplication? Well, all right, multiplication, simple enough. Uh, 3 times 3, right? I got an error. And this is actually kind of going all the way back to, say, uh, let's say fifth grade. Fifth grade, you lear you're learning about the multiplication tables, and you, you did 3x3, should equal 9. So 1, Python's yelling at me. Well, if we kind of continue on, you know, you went into... Uh, around the sixth grade, something called algebra. And in algebra, you remember your instructor was like, no, you can't use the x in this kind of fashion because it's a variable. Well, guess what? We use variables in Python. And so all of a sudden, what your instructor kind of gave you was, well, we do a dot. That's how your instructor looked. And so you went, okay, well, I'll just do three period three. Okay, that didn't help. Maybe, maybe it's because I'm putting the space in there, so 3.3. No, that's a decimal point all of a sudden. So, obviously, we're, we're starting to kind of rack our brain. But the same kind of concept came into play. Because the dot is so similar to the period, uh, and there is no kind of middle dot notation on my keyboard anywhere, what we kind of started to do is we said, well, let's rep replace that operator. Let's replace it with something we understand, something that's kind of freely available. It's not being used by anything. So all of a sudden, we said 3 asterisk 3. And all of a sudden, that allows me to now have multiplication. Now, the same kind of concept comes in with division. I don't have any, uh, I don't have, say, for example, anywhere on my computer where I have, we'll get into that in a second, I don't have this symbol anywhere on my computer or keyboard. So how do I work? Well, if we think about fractions for a second, and you can kind of see I have some examples there, I'm able to represent something like 1 half, the same kind of way I can make it sort of draw out like this. Well, again, now all of a sudden, what I'm able to do is come in here and say 3 divided by 3. And if I hit Enter, ah. But you start to see, oh, well, there's special kind of, there's syntactical kind of changes. It's not necessarily math. So say, for example, I went 10, you know, uh, little carrot uh, 2. We learned again in sort of your math classes and on your calculator that that's 10 raised to the second power. Uh, that's, 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 that's 10 the second power is 10 times 10. It's not 8. Okay, that's it's clearly not 8. So how do I do my exponents? Well, first off, the caret in this case is actually being changed. It has a different purpose. That's why it's pulling up the 8. It's actually taking all the 1s and zeros in the binary string of 10 and all the 1s and zeros in the binary string of, in our case, 2, and seeing wh where they are and kind of comparing them uh, each. All right, well, that's not what I want. It's not helping me. Uh, so all of a sudden, how do I do it? Well, instead, I come in here and I just add a, a second asterisk. That is our way of saying I want to take this, instead of multiplying it, I want to raise it to the second power. So in this case, all of a sudden, 10 asterisk asterisk 2 is going to allow me to have 100. 